Hello everybody, it's Marie from Skeletorama again. Welcome back to my channel. Give it a house shift. Um, how may I tell you? Um, I have some new lights. That means I'm happy. I'm happy because I have some new lights. And, and they're good enough that I could even look. Look, I took that off there. You could barely kind of see on here any kind of weirdness. I can show you this. I'm just, I'm just totally stoked. So I'm sure I'll have to do some fine tuning to it because it's how it always works. But anyways, so what we are going to do today is we are going to make some fake food for doll houses in 12th scale. So you see some pages here in front of me. Um, let me set those out of the way for just a second so I can show you this. So this is um, a faux book kit that I got from Alpha Stamps and it's done in, I think it's Mason Eider or MDF or something. And I, I printed out this book cover because, let's see if I can open this thing. That's always the trick. There we go. Because it's a little pantry. See? So, see all the little food in there? And I still don't know where my camera is. So, yeah, we're getting there. Baby steps. All right. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to learn how to make this fake food. And I have a couple of really cute ways to do it. So we'll kind of sit this over here. Um... So what I have here is I don't have these as a kit. I may at some point. I, I haven't really decided yet. And I would need to do some more of the box foods. There's not enough of that. Um, ideally, I would love to have all of these in one kit so that you get the box food and the canned food instead of separating them. So you can basically do your entire pantry in it. But, you know, I need a little bit more variety. Um, when I originally did, I kind of tried to approach it like, if this were my pantry, what kind of stuff would I have in there? So I tried to have a variety of things. But... It's also really hard to find boxes that are already done out like this. So most of these I've had to create, um, especially if you see the front and the back the same. I've definitely had to make those ones. So anyways, I have these on two different kinds of paper because there's two different ways that we're going to do this. So the first one is this paper. You can kind of see how it's got a bit of a shine to it. So this is brochure paper. So let me get this because I still I don't think I can pull off plastic, but... This is this right here. So what it is, is it's a glossy paper and it's the same kind of, you know, weight as a little tiny bit heavier than regular copy paper, but um, you can do it on both sides and it's glossy. And the nice thing about the glossy paper is that it gives you the nice rich colors for one and for two, it tends to resist any kind of cracking, especially when you're doing the boxes. Um, the other way we're gonna do it is here and this is printed on cardstock. So if we're gonna do them this way, um, you kind of need the rigidity of the cardstock, but when you get into the boxes again, as you fold them, sometimes they tend to kind of crack on those edges. Okay, so with this, I've got these printed out. When I did these, these ended up being a little too small. So, I mean, this whole thing will change if it, if it turns into a kit for sure, and it'll just come with a page of can lids that you can use. Um, that way, if you have any other kits from people where you just have these, you can have the can lids and use them, interchange them. You know, it's got a couple different sizes on there, okay? So anyways, that is those. And how are we going to do these? Well, we're going to do two different ways. So with the cardstock, we're just going to cut them out and we're going to take the cans and we're going to form them into a can and we're going to put the top and the bottom on them. Um, with any of those, I like to use tissue paper inside them because it gives them a little bit more rigidity. They tend not to want to kind of collapse in on themselves and whatnot. But the ones with the brochure paper, those are the unique ones. So those are going to be made with this. And this and this. Okay, so this is tubing. It's plastic tubing. So let me hold this up here so you can see. They have it at Home Depot, Lowe's, any of those sorts of places. Um, I believe I found it in the refrigeration section. Same place they have the copper tubing that I use for jewelry. So it's right next to it. But... Um, this stuff here, this has a half inch outside diameter and this one has a three eighths inch outside diameter because you want a variety of sizes of cans because if they were all the same, it would look weird. But see, you've got some fat ones and some skinny ones. So that's why I've got the two different sizes here. And there's a couple ways you can do the top as well. So this is duct tape. This is real duct tape. This is aluminum tape that you would use on like air conditioning duct work. And this we can use to put over the top as a lid. Let's see this one here. I don't know if you, how well you can see this, but this one here has that as the lid. Um, so we'll try it with that. We'll try it with that and the tops. So we'll just do a whole bunch of different ways to do it. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go cut all this stuff out 
and then I will join you back here and then we can make some stuff. So I have cut um, all the stuff out and I have them in different little ramekins kept apart by what material it is, etc. So this is the cardstock food boxes, cardstock can wrappers, brochure paper wrappers, brochure paper boxes. And then I have some of the lids, some of my cut out with a half inch hole punch, which should work for the half inch diameter ones, we'll see. Um, and then I also cut out some of the, the duct tape stuff. So that, oops, as I break it. Um, so we've got all the options. So we are gonna go ahead and start with the easy ones, I think. So we're gonna start with the cardstock food boxes. So we're gonna do the Captain Crunch box because the cereal box is a bit larger and some of these are fairly small so I mean I wouldn't do good trying to do a tutorial with you know one of these little tiny things you wouldn't see anything I wouldn't see anything so it wouldn't really help much so there's those okay so with this you just cut around the edges and then you cut where the little flaps and things are and then what I use for all of these are these so these are bending pliers and I do have a spare pair still in its packaging so you can see what it looks like so it looks like this so it's made by Tamiya it comes out of Japan um, you can get them Amazon again this is the place that I see the stuff most frequently um, and consistently but a lot of times when you do order from Amazon it is coming from Japan so you're going to have a bit of a weight on it so just know that but it's completely worth it these are made for doing different models and things especially those ones with the metal where you have to bend um, but it's beautiful for bending paper. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these, we're going to go along those lines, grab it with it, line that up, and fold it. And then we'll go over here to this side and do the same thing because it's a little bit long. But I usually do the end ones first and then the center pieces. So I'm going to bend there. And we're going to bend here eventually. Okay, and I do use a bone folder on these as well, just to make sure that the folds are nice and crisp. The, the more crisp your folds on things are, the more believable it is, um, you know, when it's a miniature. If you just kind of have those folds where they're sort of folded, it'll look okay, but it, it won't ever look quite right. So, bone folder you can use if you don't have bone folder back to your scissors, um, you know, anything to really get that edge press down good okay so we got those ones we'll start rating them back up and we're just going to start getting these ones so same thing grab it line it up we're going to fold and press okay so along all the different lines for it it's going to do the same thing and some of these it is kind of hard to see the lines again you know depending on if i use this as a kit at some point or not you know i'll try to maybe make it easier to see but it's just the nature of them if you want them to look real you can't have like borders and things or or it'll look like it's been cut out so there we go and then our little flap And these are very fiddly they take a little bit of patience but once you get them okay now if you look see if you can see a little bit see how it kind of cracks a bit the ink on there so i use a color laser printer and the toner is a plastic really and so you know when you do that it'll kind of especially when you you hit, get it with the bone folder it'll kind of mess the ink up but it's okay it just makes it look vintage so we're going to take this and the easiest way to do boxes is fold one of your sides in like this with the flap on it. Take a little bit of PVA glue. I have a, a little um, fine tip nozzle on mine. And so I'm going to put just a tiny bit. You don't need much at all. And then we're going to take this and we're going to fold this straight over. And it should fold over, but of course it's not doing it. Because it's like, no, you're on camera. I'm not doing anything. So we're just going to make those meet and you can take the bone folder and kind of push that up in there or tweezers usually i have tweezers out for this kind of stuff so i can get in there and kind of squeeze that shut 
Okay, so we've got our little box. And just like any other box, we're going to fold our little flaps in. And then I like to put a little dot of glue on the flaps. And fold the bottom in. So on these, I tried to have the stuff with the printing. So the one you're going to fold in is going to be the one without the printing. And tweezers are also good for getting in there and kind of pressing them down against your finger. Because this glue, it's the scotch. Um, let's see if I grab the bottle here. It's this stuff. Scotch tacky glue, it's fantastic and it grabs really, really fast. I love it. So on this one, we're going to put this on this bottom one just a little bit. You know, maybe that much. And then you're going to fold this bottom over here. Same sort of thing. I'm going to take my tweezers and I'm going to push down from the inside. I'm going to sit it down on the, the mat and press down on it just to kind of square it up, right? So now we could go ahead and, and seal up the top as well and it would be just fine, but with these things I like to use tissue paper. So I just have some little bits of tissue paper and I'm going to scrunch it up and what it's going to do is it's going to give you a little bit of stuff on the inside, right? So it will keep it from trying to sort of collapse in on itself. And when you're dealing with this kind of stuff, yeah, you end up using your um, tweezers quite a bit. So, another little bit. And you don't want to overstuff it, but you, know, you do want to have it so it's nice and lifelike, I guess you could say. Doesn't take much. So, there we go. And we're going to do the same sort of thing. We're going to put our flaps in. And we're going to put a little dot of glue here and here. And we're going to take the one that doesn't have, well, they both have it. Let's, let's do this one here. We're going to put that one in. And then we have some tissue paper trying to escape. There we go. And then a little bit of glue on here. And then fold this top in. And then just kind of hold it against your desk. I mean, this one you can't really press, you know, from the inside because, well, it's in a box now. Okay, so I usually kind of hold these, make sure everything sticks down real good. And there we go. So we've got a little Captain Crunch peanut butter cereal box. Now this is with the cardstock. So we're going to sit this to one side and we'll do the um, brochure paper one, which I'm not, I don't think I've done the boxes in the brochure paper before. I got it specifically kind of for the, um, for the canned goods stuff. Yeah, we're going to put a little bit more glue because that's just not, for whatever reason, it's not wanting to adhere very good. So we'll just add more. And since we have the tissue paper in there, it's less likely to collapse upon itself when I press down on that and hold that. So let's see, let's grab, what do we got here? Oh, we'll do Frankenberry. Okay, so we'll do a different cereal in the brochure paper. All right, so there's that. Cereal. We'll just pretend somebody's already eating it. To heck with it. Okay, so same thing with this. You're going to take your piece. Let me see if I'm kind of centered here. I'm going to hold my bending ruler or bending pliers. You can do the same thing with, you know, like needle nose pliers and things, but they have an angle to them, which just makes it kind of a, a pain to do. Okay, and same with this one. I'm going to go back over here. We're going to fold that down. Okay. And then I do them by hand first, and then I'll hit them with the bone folder. So, those flat edges. Same on this side. Push down with your fingers. And that way, if you, you know, didn't necessarily bend them completely straight, you, you still have a little bit of control over them before it's too late. Okay, and so we're going to kind of pull those out a bit. And then I will try to come close here so you can see again. Okay, so I've got my pliers right there. And just bend and press. And all the different seams. Make sure you don't catch your flaps under there in a weird way or you'll kind of tweak them a little bit, but okay. Like I did right there, <laughs> of course. 
And so again with these, I'm going to bend it with my fingers first, and then I'm going to go hit it with the bone folder. So that way I can make sure it's straight and level. It's not getting off kilter. There we go. And just a little bitty flap at the end. Okay, so there we have that. Now, ostensibly, if I put this here and flatten it and I put this down here, it should meet exactly, but it's just not doing it because that means I didn't quite get it as straight as I should have. So we have this here. We're going to put a little bit of glue. That's all you need, about that much. And then we'll bring this flap over here and line those edges up. And try to get it to stay. There we go. And hold it for a second, just long enough to get my tweezers in here. And then with the tweezers, you can really press those seams down from the inside. And it really helps it. it makes life easier. Okay, so we've got our little box again. So same thing. So if you notice, I've got on the bottom flaps, this has less printing and this has more because it's designed to be that bottom flap. This was, somebody was nice enough to scan an entire box, including the bottom flaps, which is great. So we're going to put a little bit on here and it saved me the time because we have these boxes. So I could have just scanned ours, but okay. And so I'm going to hold this. And when you're doing this, kind of make sure you're holding it square and put the handle of the tweezers down in there and kind of press. So you're pressing the flaps against that bottom part. And we will hit this with the glue. And then we will shut this so it's nice and square and then put it down on the glass mat or whatever your work surface is. And just take the handle of the tweezers and press down real good and, and smash those layers together. So it'll make a nice box at the bottom. Okay. So once again, more tissue paper. So stuff that in there. Like I said, this stuff's a little bit thicker than copy paper, but it's not quite as thick as the cardstock. So I wasn't really sure how it was going to perform as far as the boxes go. It, it does beautifully for the cans because of, of the way we're going to do them. And, and the way we're going to do them is a trick that I borrowed from the, the little small scale modeling kits, the, the miniatures kits. I would grab one, but it's, it's a little problematic to do that. Um, the ones where it's like a room or a bookstore or whatever, and they're either on 124th or 148th scale usually. Um, and it's a trick that they use to make the little canned foods for them. I thought that is brilliant. So we've got it on our little flaps and we're going to close this one first. Kind of hold it down a little bit and put some glue on our top flap. And so it's super easy. It's just, you're just making a box. And we're going to hold this top and the bottom for just a minute. Now, if you notice on this one, we didn't have nearly the cracking that we did on this. Okay. So this looks like a really old box versus a brand new box. So the brochure paper just seems to perform better as far as keeping the, the ink on there um, and not doing that sort of white cracking stuff. You can take uh, distress ink and kind of hit those edges with it too and, and make it look a little, little neater, but there we go. So we've got our little cereals. All right. So now we're going to do one of the cans and we'll do a fairly large one. And this is in the cardstock. Okay. So first thing you do, the way I have these on here, that's the label. And then this is the extra bit. So it's designed so that the label will come around and meet here and it'll make your can the right size. So we're going to want to pre curl our paper. 
So it's just like when you would get the, those little paper ribbon type things at Christmas and to put on packages and you would use the, the scissors to make it into the little curls. Same principle. So you're going to go on the opposite side here underneath and you're just going to put this between your, you know, thumb and the, whatever you want to use. You can use a paintbrush. You can use this. If you don't have anything, you can use your fingers. It'll do the same thing. Okay. And so this is going to be easy. We're just going to glue this around here like this. So I usually get it kind of close to where I need it. Once again, so our friend, the tacky glue. Let me move that so y'all can see here. It's really hard doing these little tiny things like this because, you know, number one, my glue is being a pain as it likes to do. And so just a little bit on there. Wipe that off before I get it on the outside. And just kind of bring your, your can thing around and sort of line it up here so that it just goes over that regular spot there. And again, get your tweezers and press. So I usually will press this seam here first with them and then I'll kind of follow the can around. So that way if, and this is a fairly large one so I can actually squeeze in there with my fingers. Now if it didn't line up perfect like this because I'm always off kilter with something, um, you need to take your scissors and kind of trim that inner piece down. And we're going to put a top on this anyway. Okay, so there we go. And then I kind of will take it after I've done that and sort of put it down here and press everything down really good, especially that seam on the outside. And then I'll kind of roll it around a bit just to, to make sure everything stays looking rounded. You know, it doesn't matter what the inside looks like though, it's just the outside. Okay, so we have our can like this. And so we need lids for this one. So let's grab some of these guys here. We'll take the ones that I cut out because it's going to have a little bit extra on it. And this is a fiddly bit. So let's see if I can hold it up where you can see it. So I'm going to take the glue. This is where this fine tip comes in real handy. And I'm going to put it all around the edge of this here. And I'm going to take one of my lids, flip it upside down, and I'm going to center it on here. And then press down real good. So you're going to have a border. You can see that. See how there's a border around it? That's fine. We're going to cut that off. But this way it'll give us a nice um, adhesion to the can and uh, we won't have to worry about that. And again, I'm going to take the tissue paper and give it some sort of inner support as well because even the cans will try to kind of collapse in on themselves. Now with the other method for doing the cans, you don't have to worry about that at all because it works really nice. All right, so got this one in here. We press it down. All right, and then same sort of thing here. We're gonna grab another one of these large ones. Make sure it's gonna fit over there good. I always like to check. And then I'm gonna put this around the edges. And we're gonna take this and we're gonna put it on top. All right. And I usually take my fingernail and kind of run it alongside that edge um, just to kind of clear off any little extra glue. Okay, so we're going to set this one aside for a minute and let it dry. And we're going to take these and we're going to put them in their little container over there. And now we're going to use the brochure stuff. So I would use the um, cardstock ones if I was going to do it like that, where I didn't use any kind of inner support structure. But for this, I'm going to use the brochure paper because it just, it works so much better. So we'll grab... See, this one looks kind of nice. We'll grab a V8. Um, the way I've done them, so if, if they do make it into a kit, they're done based on length here of the, the picture portion of it. So that will go on the one with the half inch outer diameter, and this length will go on the one with the three quarters of an inch. So even though this looks tiny, this is actually goes on the half inch one. Oops. And we're dropping things. Okay, and we'll get one of those. And let's see one more, one more short one. There we go, the green beans one. All right, so this is where this stuff here is going to come in. Okay, 
So you have a couple options. Um, if you want to use the duct tape option, you have to cut it first because you're going to apply this on the ends of it first. And then you're going to put this wrap on the outside. Because normally what I do is I wrap this and I do like a row of them and then I cut them apart. So we are going to do that with this and it tends to like to curl, obviously. That's the one thing I don't like about this. It's really hard to just get it straight, you know? So let's take this here. I'm going to take a little Sharpie pen and I'm going to draw a line on it just to help me cut it. I, I still, I'm sure, will not cut it even remotely straight, but that's the nature of the beast with this particular one. It gives me a bit of an idea. Because again, if we're going to put that stuff on there, you know, we're not going to be able to um, wrap it around and then put it on after. It has to go on right then. I've tried putting this in my little miter thing. And that kind of works, but it's just finding something to cut it that's problematic. Okay, so we've got our little cut piece here. This is going to be our can. And then I kind of tend to hold it up here and look to see how level it is. This is miraculously fairly level. So I'm going to get that one little spot there. I'm just going to leave it alone because if I mess with it, I'm going to ruin it. So let's not do that. So if we're going to use these, this is the time to do that. So this stuff has a paper backing on it. It's very, 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 very sticky. Now you can put it in, say, a, you know, 5 8 inch hole punch, decorative hole punch. But man, I did that and <laughs> it makes it so sticky. It's not even funny. So you're going to take the sticky off and you're going to sit it on here and then you're just going to bring the sides down and then try to do it in, in such a way that it doesn't leave you too much. And then this one I kind of take and I roll it on my hand on the, the surface to kind of press it down even more. And then we're going to do that to the other side. Take the sticky off and we're going to set it down. Put it on there like this, okay? You have it on there, and then just kind of smoosh it down because it's aluminum. It's it's like foil, even though you know it's it's a little bit thicker and it's stickier. It's going to behave kind of the same, so it'll it'll fold in there real nice for you. And you know, if you can get it to roll on the surface, you can kind of get it to uh, smooth down even more. Okay, so we have this. I believe it was for the pumpkin. It was. Okay, so now we're going to take our label. And we are going to do the back of it with a thin layer of the glue again. Okay, you don't need a ton, but, and again, this is sized specifically for this outer diameter piece. So we're going to put the blank part first, and then we're just going to start rolling it around trying to keep it straight and I'm just going to come around here and meet this and see it's sized so that it will exactly meet that. Okay and we're going to hold this. Usually with this I end up having to hit that very outer edge because I don't go directly to the edge. So I'll hit that with some more glue. You know if this thing's not being a piece of crap on me. It just sticks so randomly it'll it'll get some kind of weird clog, you know? I'm not sure what that's about, but it only happens with this one and it's just irritating. Okay, so we got the glue on there. Now we're gonna hold this. And see we have our little can. So technically we have our little lid on there as well with the foil. Um, it doesn't look obviously as realistic, but as putting the, the can lid on there, but it's close. Okay, so we're gonna sit that one here. We're going to come back to our little buddy here, the salmon can, and we're going to trim this off because it's it's dry enough now that we can just get in here. These are fine detail scissors, um, and they are the, the titanium coated ones or what have you, so they're supposed to be non-stick. They do their best, but some things just, you know, you don't really have much of a choice. Okay, we got that, and we're going to do the same here. And since we have our kind of stuffing or what have you in there, um, again, it's not going to want to collapse in on itself like it normally would. So you run less of a risk of just squeezing it slightly too hard and having it 
exploding. Okay, so there we go. We have our little can of salmon. Now this looks like a real can because it's got the can lid. We can always take, haha, <laughs> see what I did there? Um, one of these, this is one of the half inch ones, if I can grab it. And you can still glue this to the top of this as well. And then when you peek and you see around the edges, you'll, you'll see the foil. And, and so it'll give it even more of a realistic look. So let's do that just for fun. Um, and, you know, these things, it's, it's insane how much they charge for these. You know, you get a, a little pack of, I don't know, maybe 10 or so, if you're lucky, of the, the little canned food things. And it's, it's like 7 or $8. You know, and, and some of them don't look all that great. So this way, if you, let's say you really like this brand of canned pumpkin or something and you're in their fan club, I don't know what you do. Um, you can make your own cans of it. You know, you can, you can have your pantry reflect your actual life if you want. Like if you have a dog, you can have, you know, the kind of dog food that your dog likes and then do the box treats that your dog likes and, and that sort of thing. So it's not, it's not terribly difficult. Um, Julie, oh geez, it'll come to me in a second. Julie Warren, she does some wonderful videos. She has one as well on doing the little miniature food where she shows you how to make these on the computer. Um, she has more patience than I do for that sort of thing to, to do a, a tutorial on that. But um, I'll link her below because she's that's a really good video and it'll show you exactly how you can make these, how you can make your cans the whole shebang. Okay, so we've got our little can tops on there. The other way you can do this is you can do a bunch of them at the same time. If you know you're not going to use the foil tape on it and you want to just use this, let's go ahead and make a bunch of them. So this is a 3 8 inch, so we're going to move those larger ones. We're going to use these smaller ones. You're going to do the same thing that you did with the cans um, with the foil and you're going to do glue on here. And you're going to start with that blank side and you're just going to pick a spot on here because then we're going to cut it. And the nice thing with that is once we wrap this around here and get this wrapped nice and tight. And again, like I said, you almost always have to go over that little tiny edge because I don't glue right up to the very edge on the first pass. And you get this nice and even so it matches. Um, you can just go along and cut this with your scissors and you know you're going to cut it straight. So if you have the same issues I do with cutting this stuff straight, that's that's why I started doing it this way. It's like, oh, that makes it so much easier because I know exactly where to cut. So we'll do the same thing. And again, this is that brochure paper, so it's giving you the more vivid colors. It's going to resist any kind of, you know, cracking or any of that sort of stuff. And again, we just put the plain side down first and then bring the rest of it around to meet it and then make sure your edges are nice and straight on here. Not sure how well you can see that but that and again we'll hit this little edge here. Hold that down for just a second. It doesn't take long. Okay and we'll do this last one here. And so as you can see, if you do it this way, especially with the tubing, the tubing gives you all your structure. So you don't have to do any of the um, tissue paper. It's, it's going to be a lot sturdier. I mean, you could even make a set of these for, you know, kids to play with. Just make sure they're older kids if they're going to be something this small so they don't try to inhale them. You know, you know how toddlers and stuff are. They just eat everything. Um, so we'll get this end again. We're going to hold that down. And then we're going to let this sit to the side to dry a little bit and we're going to grab our other ones. So once you're sure it's grabbed and you're good, then you can move on to the next thing. Now with the bigger ones, I do tend to go ahead and kind of pre-curl them a bit just to make it easier to get them around there without them fighting you so much. All right. And this is fun because, you know, depending on the... Um, the design of the can, you'll have a bunch of different cans that are taller or shorter. So even though you've only got two different diameters of the tubing, um, you know, you can still, it'll look like you still have a huge variety of stuff. Okay, so on this one you can probably see a little bit better, so we need to make sure we're pulling this around and coming in even. 
because this tube's going to want to keep curling. It's just what it does. Um, it's really hard to get it straight, you know. And you'll have a little bit extra glue there. Just wipe that off. Hold that down until it takes. There we go. And then get the rest of the glue off my hand because, you know, God forbid. Okay, and then this one, same thing. But yeah, you know, you could sit here and, and glue, you know, an entire thing of tubing worth of these things. And then you just cut them apart and you put the little lids on the top and the bottom and you are golden. Okay, so again, we're doing the blank one first. We're bringing this one around, and as long as your edges meet evenly like this, you know it's straight. Even though the tube looks like it's curling, you're actually straight. So, a little tiny bit on this very end. Get the lid on there. Okay. So then usually when it squishes through and you kind of wipe it off real quick, you're kind of filling that little gap with some glue too, so it helps. All right, so we got those. We're gonna let those sit for a minute. Now we don't need these anymore. So we're gonna work on this one here. So when you take your scissors to cut it, these are the Tim Holtz tonic ones. So make sure that you have the, the logo facing away from what you're cutting, so it'll serrate the side away from you. And you just make sure that the blade is lined up at the top and the bottom, and you just, Cut through it. Whee! And then you shoot stuff everywhere. Let's see. You cut it off nice and straight. And same thing, we're keeping this away from here. And I usually take the scissors and I kind of slide them until they meet resistance at the, the top of the, the label. And then you cut it. And here we go. So we've got our can. And we are going to take yet another one of our lids here. These are the smaller ones that are designed to fit these cans. And you put your glue on here. You know, if, if you can, it's best to, to cut it a little bit larger and then you can trim it down just to be on the safe side. And then I'm going to put this here and I'm going to center it on that. Kind of wipe some of that extra glue off. Just like we did the other one, if you can see that. See, I've got the little edge. So you got your edge there. Do the same thing to the top. Okay, and you can really assembly line these things. And, and if you want a nice full pantry, you know, it, it does take quite a few of these. So get that on there as straight as we can. You just want to make sure you're covering up the plastic. Okay, and let that sit aside and dry. So cut these ones off, same sort of deal, you know. I won't I won't do five thousand of them because you, know, you obviously you get the picture. So we have the one that we use the foil tape on. Again, putting a, a can lid on, it's optional, but it does kind of help it look a little more real. It's nice and sturdy. This is the one that we did that's just the cardstock, so it's much lighter. Um, this one you would definitely want to uh, glue down to something because it's not gonna even sit there quite naturally. If you just breathe on it, it's gonna go over. I usually will take my ink and just kind of hit that edge because see how it's got that white paper edge? I'll just sit that with like vintage photo or something just to kind of disguise it a little bit so it's not quite as obvious. All right, so this is probably good enough for us to trim. And just take your scissors and trim around. You know, do it looking from the bottom as opposed to the top because this is the part that's, that's connecting with it, so you're less likely to make a mistake that way. Same thing at the bottom. There's hardly any there. A little bit here. Do, do, do. And there we go. Okay. So see, we've got this and I would do the ink, but the, the glue is still a little bit wet and so I'd end up messing it up. But how easy was that to do? Hmm? So lots of different ways you can do it, lots of different materials. Again, if you're going for a vintage kitchen, you may want to have it look like the, you know, the stuff's got a little bit of wear and tear on it um, versus what have you. But 
Um, like I said, if, if I do a kit at some point, I'll, I'll link it below. Um, I'm kind of, I don't know, I'm still on the fence about it and I would have to make more boxes, but um, otherwise there's tons and tons of people on Etsy that have kits that you can download this stuff and do that with their kits and it's super easy and you can fill up your pantry in no time. I'll just bring this back in so that y'all can see again. Okay, this was all made using that same stuff. So these, all these boxes are the same boxes that I had on there and the cans. So it's that one little sheet of each. Um, I think I did the cans twice maybe. And look at all the variety in there. And it's got all the different lids. So, you know, it's super fun. So since my new uh, dollhouse that I'll be building is gonna have a kitchen, I gotta make some food anyway. So I figured, hey, what, what the heck? So yeah, I probably will make a kit eventually for it so I'll link that if I do but anyways I hope you guys enjoyed it and don't forget we've got the tubing stuff if you want to use that option they do have other um, out, outer diameters besides the half inch and the three quarter um, there is a five eighths inch I think and there's some smaller ones but these two just seem the most realistic for a, a 12 scale can size so if you want to do Barbie stuff just Get, this would be your small can and then you would get a 5 8 inch maybe for your large one kind of thing so you can scale them up and down however you want so anyways i hope you enjoyed um i will see you guys later okay